folk. Folk people. I lost you having some proper money there. Try to make you a quick book. I can't. I can't do Irish. Like it starts to fade into English. Like I'm not good. Uh, I'm not. Anyways, <laughs> I'm fucking dog shit at making pigs. I found that out. Not good, boys. But to be completely fair, looking back. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. These were kind of dog shit bets. Dog shit. Because, first of all, putting two bets on the same fight is, uh, out of my three locks, risky. And I almost never do it. Like, if I'm actually betting. I never like to put more than one bet on a fight. <clears throat> but anyways, I'm fucking going to learn from this shit. And uh, I'll get better, hopefully. Or just continue to be ass. Because that would be good, too. Because if I just lose every bet, then you guys just fade me. Just bet the opposite of whatever I say then you guys win money so right so if i flop every single bet or if i win them all either way y'all are making money i mean it just depends which end of the spectrum you pick but <laughs> okay yeah so i had uh noons over one and a half rounds minus 112 i I liked those odds. And I mean, looking at those odds, those are good odds still. I feel Megan was not mentally there. I mean, I've never seen a fighter... L the look on her face when she was walking into the Apex Center was... That was no bueno, man. And her team looked so melancholy. They just all look like, oh, fuck. Which, I feel like that was probably because, I mean, I don't know, but you had to have guessed that Megan was probably breaking down or something similar. I mean, she, walking into the Apex Center, she looked like she, you know, was just crying. <laughs> and, and her walking to the cage her corner were just so melancholy and then her head her uh, head coach there which i couldn't see if it was james Krause. like i don't know if james Krause is her coach but it looked like james crouch from the side and then i would see certain then i would be like is that james Krause? is that not james Krause? so i don't know if that was james Krause, but it, but, her, but the like head coach was the only guy that was like all right come on you know pump it up like you're about to fight for a fucking title you know but then everyone else is just so melancholy everyone else is just oh fuck megan's about to get destroyed <laughs> and her team knew it and megan knew it i mean it happens right it happens. Fighting is a fighting is a tricky game, tricky tricky game, where your brain could really just turn on you, where you could feel invincible for months, and then you know that that day just it could just completely flip, and and then your fucking body can just be like, nope, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be here, and then. <laughs> A lot of fighters go through that, and I think Megan went through that, and it's a hard uh, hump to overcome, and a lot of fighters don't, and the ones that do, I feel like, really rise, because uh, greatest fighter ever, right, fucking GSP, he talked about just 
every fight, just before like that fucking walkout, just being terrified and just not wanting to fight and just hoping that an earthquake would fucking happen or some shit and the roof would fall on the cage and then, oh, the fucking fight's canceled now, guys. All right. Oh, thank God. Get to go home now. But he fought through that. He pushed through uh, that mental block and, you know, and became the greatest fighter ever. I mean, and I think Megan was hit with that and Noon saw that. Like, they, like they were kind of feeling it out. But then once Noon's sense that little weakness she just started just pressuring her and and she just made her crumble which is literally the opposite of what I said I said that Megan was tough she was game which she is tough and she was game I mean before you know and yeah I mean it fucking happens man so I got that one wrong and the other bet was also for the Noons fight uh, to end on points. Obviously got that one wrong, too. Couldn't have gotten <laughs> that more wrong to end on points. Bro, it didn't even go halfway through, like, the first round. Fucking never even mind. Ending on points. My God. The one bet that I did get was kind of, yeah, meh. And, like, what the fuck was that fight, man? I mean, I no, no, what the fuck was the ending? I mean, that fight was amazing. It was a, it was an that was a really great fight, and Aljo, those first two rounds looked so good, so so good. But he got a little careless and just was pushing a pace that you know nobody can fucking keep up like the pace that he was going at it it is physically impossible to keep that up for five rounds like it doesn't matter what kind of athlete you you are you cannot keep up that fucking pace and i feel like <clears throat> he just probably just wasn't thinking he was just in that flow state just going 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 and he probably wasn't thinking oh i need to save some fucking stamina <laughs> so i think it was uh it was like midway through like the third round like yan really started to like take over and i think this uh dis disqualification was yeah it was it was in the fourth round and beginning of the fourth round uh well like the end of the third and then in the fourth, Aljo was was fading. And, like, you could just tell that he was trying to push through it. I mean, but he just, you know, he just <laughs> spent all the gas, you know. He <laughs> was fucking pedal down, and there was no more gas left. Then he was sputtering. And then that knee happened. Which was... The weirdest thing ever that <clears throat> that was probably the most blatant foul in UFC history and the and the knee was just weird because the ref was like he's down and then Jan was just like I'll just fucking knee him yeah, I'll just fucking knee this guy in the dome why not who cares rules schmools right I mean rules are meant to be broken am I right people Fucking knee him in the head while he's on. <laughs> like, my goodness. And it was such a weird thing because he looked over to his corner and he was talking to them, which Khabib says that his corner told him to knee him in the fucking head. But then Jan said he asked them and he said he couldn't hear them. And that he... that what his corner said didn't didn't really matter because he said he couldn't hear what they said and that he was watching his uh, hands and he wasn't watching his uh, knee he thought he was crouching so as soon as his hands lifted need him in the fucking head 
now is that true who knows i mean i would have to say yes because Piotr Jan was starting to take over that fight and he was on his way to to winning that fight so i don't see him intentionally doing a foul like that <clears throat> i mean maybe like because Aljo did that. I think that was probably his third time doing it. Where as soon as Jan got in a clinch or got in range to knee, Aljo would just drop down and then become grounded. And then, okay, now you can't fucking knee me. And my head is like right near the fucking mat. So it's going to be hard to get any significant damage off. It's... Should it be legal? I mean, I personally don't think so. I think that that, you know, that that shouldn't be in the rules. I think the whole uh, grounded, not grounded thing is really tricky. I think we should just do pride rules, you know? But soccer kicks to the fucking head and knees, you know, when, when, uh, you know, they're on the uh, ground or up against the cage. So those are really brutal. Those are, the, like, the most brutal knockouts. I mean, it looks like you kill the fucking guy, right? It's So I could see why they're banned. But the rules are the rules. And Aljo smartly uh, used, used that. I mean, Aljo is using the rules... As a weapon, which is what all of the top athletes do in every sport, right? You you find the fucking loopholes and you abuse them. And he was doing that. And maybe Jan got frustrated and need him in the head because of that. He was sick of him doing that. I mean, that's the only other thing that I could think of because I don't see why he... Besides that, why he would purposely knee him in the head. I mean, it's not like... Aljo is dominating him the whole fight, and he was like, ah, oh, No, it's like, that fight was starting... No, I mean, it wasn't starting. That fight was going fucking Piotr's way, and Aljo was fading. And... Yeah, so... And, uh... How it was handled by the ref that was just <clears throat> very strange you know that uh, I uh, think that that was the same ref that had the the, the terrible stoppage with fucking Euros Medic I mean which by the way fucking, Euro, fucking Euros holy shit watch out for that kid man oh my goodness oof like that was fucking nasty but i mean that that kid he 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 and he he got hit with probably 20 extra punches that he didn't need to when he got dropped with that knee and then he got punched like a few times and he went down flat it's like that should have been stopped there and then the fight literally went on for i think 20 more seconds which is kind of crazy. I mean, just 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 because a guy is moving doesn't mean that he has a chance to come back and that he's defending, right? Because he was moving, but he wasn't he wasn't defending. I mean, the guy was rocked. It's like he was just trying to move to survive, but it's like he wasn't all there, and that fight should have been stopped, there was no way that he was going to come back from that, so why have him you know, take that extra damage but anyways, it's the same ref from from that shit and then Aljo gets hit with his knee and Aljo's fucked up, he's clearly fucked up he tries to fucking get up he stumbles right sits back down the doctor comes in he's like yeah the dude can't fucking get up like 
I mean... And then he doesn't stop the fight. He's just like, oh, we should give him time. And just asking Aljo, like, if he's good. Where it's like, bro, you cannot do that, man. You cannot do that in fighting. As a ref, you need to take input from the fighter and input from the doctor and to make your own decision. You you cannot leave it up to the fighter. That's why you're there. Because a lot of these guys will push themselves literally to the brink of death and just... I mean, and in boxing, it fucking happens, man. I mean... <clears throat> Where guys just try to push through it. And they're so tough. And like. They just try to push through like the fucking pain. And then it ends up being something. You know serious. And then it becomes fatal. I mean that happens in boxing a lot. I mean at least. Once a fucking year. Right. So. Y you can't put that. On the fighter. Because now you're putting Aljo's pride, like, because Aljo doesn't want the fight to stop, right? But then he also realized that he's like, bro, I'm fucked up. If I get up, I'm probably going to get, you know, fucking fucked up. It's like he was extremely tired and then he got rocked with that knee. So, I mean, the. And Aljo got so much hate for acting and all this fucking bullshit. And it's like, bro, go... F oh, oh, you motherfucker. Go fuck yourself. It's like, what are you talking about? Like, what? I mean... Like, Jan is the fucking one that threw that... Like, the most illegal strike in UFC history. I mean... Besides cause check daily, where fucking Paul just fucking cracked him like after the fucking bell, I I can't think of a more blatant foul. I mean that was that was insane, and then for and then for the ref to just put it on Aljo and have it, it was just, and then fucking I don't know the fucking the whole thing was just weird, and then the outcome and people. <sighs> I'm starting to realize that there's a lot of amazing people and then there's a lot of stupid fucking people. And I hope that you are an amazing person and not one of the stupid ones. <laughs> right? Uh, Jan and Sterling went on a little... Uh, back and forth thing which which at first at first it was respectful it was very you know it was just like hey i, do, I didn't want to win the belt like this you know we could fight you know we could just do this you know actually <clears throat> and then yon was like hey I'm, I'm sorry i mean i didn't mean to throw that and i hope he gets better and we can do this once again, right? And then... And then it just devolved from that. Where, uh... It was, uh... Aljo was posing with the belt. And then... Piotr Jan posted a uh, meme. And granted, it's a fire meme. And it's just... <laughs> Aljo and uh, fucking Piotr just it's weird because Piotr posted like one meme and it was like a funny little you know thing but I mean and then Aljo was just kind of just went on like a couple of rants about you know uh okay 
he just said, you're right, Petey. I should have told everyone who flew out to Vegas to not come to my house, to not say they were happy to see me and to not want any pictures with me. By this logic, I should have been locked in my room until my next fight. Makes sense. Granted, brother, it's it's COVID. <laughs> and you probably sh- you, like you probably shouldn't be having a party in the first place with with a bunch of people that flew in from different states. Do you realize the problem is there? But okay. <laughs> but anyways. But I get where he's coming from, but it's like Aljo, like you don't need to say this, bud. I mean, it was it's not a big deal. I feel like I feel like when there's hate, you can't just defend yourself. You just have to ignore it, and then it'll go away. Like, once you do this, man, it's just going to make the hate worse. Where he just... <laughs> then, like, his Instagram, he posted, like, an e- like an even fucking longer thing. Where, uh... I mean, like, I, like, don't want to read, like, the whole thing. But it's just... It's just, like, pretty much that, saying that, hey... Um, my fucking family came out, like, my friends came out, I mean, I'm, I'm the champion, I'm not the one that did the fucking foul, they wanted to pose with it, and all this shit, so that's what I did, and it's like, you don't have to defend yourself like that, you're fucking good, baby, (laughs) do your thing, man, and I suggest, don't read the comments, don't read the comments, bro. <laughs> I would suggest that because casuals are fucking idiots. And they're just going to say dumb, disrespectful shit. <sighs> and then the, that's what you saw with this fight. But hey. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. So that fight was just weird. Well, like, the ending and the aftermath and and all that was just very weird. But then the fight before that was Islam Makachev. Goddamn. Goddamn. He made Drew Dober one of, um... I think he's in the top ten best lightweights in that weight class, but for some reason he's not ranked. I have no idea why this man's not ranked. But Drew Dober is legit. He's a great fighter, and he doesn't get the love. Like, I don't know why. I mean, this man is unranked. This man is unranked, and he's he's one of the top ten best lightweights. Definitely. And Islam fucking just came in there and just ragdolled him I mean that's the thing with grappling right is that it's so hard to make up that gap that once that gap's there it is it is like fucking impossible to make that shit up I mean Islam has been training in the mountains of Russia since he was a little boy throwing other fucking crazy Russians on their head. He's been doing that since he could literally walk. He's built up a grappling strength that is just... Unless if you've been doing that too, unless if you also been throwing dudes on their fucking head since you were three every day of your fucking life, it's just unmatched, and you and, and you just saw that. Just Islam. There, were, there was just some points where it wasn't even like um, it was uh, you know, it was uh, it was a uh, it was a back and forth scramble, and he was controlling him by technique. Well, I mean, it it was technique, but it's like not like. There was just points where he was just holding him down. He just was stronger. And there was just points where he was just fucking just holding him there. 
and Drew Dober couldn't do anything because he had a fucking Chevy Tahoe parked on top of him. I mean, like, that was that was something else. And then by the third round, you could just tell that Drew was like, all right, look, guy, if you're just going to sit here and take me down and just hold me here, I mean, let's fucking just, uh, let's fucking just, you fucking got this one. Let's fucking go on to the fucking next fight, which that's what it felt like. Because that choke, it didn't seem like Drew was, you know, going out or anything. It, it like, just seemed like he was like, all right, it's fucking this, you know, like, instead of, you know, <laughs> you just doing this for the next four, like, fucking minutes, I'll just tap. Let's fucking just get this done. Like, we've already seen that you're just going to hold me here for the whole round. So, um, yeah. So, that was, that was, that was interesting. I mean, I can't say I'm entirely shocked. I mean, I, I love Drew, so I was hoping that he could, uh, you know, in those short bursts where he was on the feet, I was hoping he could land something, but that is easier said than done, right? So, I mean, uh, but I mean, Drew will be back. I mean, Drew is a fucking beast, so. The, uh, first fight on the, uh, actually, I should probably talk about the Jan and Izzy fight. I talked about the Nunes fight, I talked about the Sterling fight, haven't talked about Jan and Izzy, and oh my goodness, that Polish power, people, I was, I, I fucking called it, I was, I, <laughs> I was saying this shit last fucking week to watch out for that Polish power, and not... And not because of striking. Not because of striking people. Because of grappling. That Polish power is not just striking. It is grappling. And what sealed that fight... Well, I mean, on the fucking cards. I mean, not really. Because Jan won four rounds some fucking how. But what sealed that fight was uh, those takedowns in the fourth and fifth round. And that fucking Polish power, baby just grinding him and Izzy couldn't really do much and he got nullified for those rounds <clears throat> granted I'll have to go back and watch that fight but watching it live I had Izzy up 3-0 going into the fourth round and the broadcast they were saying that uh, after that after round two, they said that the rounds were split and that it was one one. And I'll have to go back and watch, but I don't, I don't recall anything significant that Jan did. Izzy was controlling the pace. He was landing the better strikes. He was landing more strikes. I don't, I don't, I don't understand how you know pe how people are saying that Jan won those, but. I'll have to go back and uh, watch them. That I that I definitely think Jan won because it's not like you know they were utterly dominant. It's not like you know he fucking pieced them up and shit. But I thought that Izzy was doing more work. But there was a few rounds that were close. So I could see Jan taking one of them, but i don't know like four rounds does anybody think that jan won four rounds which like fucking dana said that he was just like does anybody think that jan won four rounds that is ridiculous which it is that's fucking ridiculous jan did not win four rounds and have a 10-8 like we need to have clear lines on what a 10-8 is this murky water of 10-8 rounds is ridiculous Cause like you could fucking have a guy get rocked and dropped, and it's not a fucking ten eight, but then Jan takes him down halfway through. It's not. It's not even like Jan controlled him for the entire run. I could see that if it was some Islam shit where he took him down in 
the first 15 seconds and controlled him for four minutes and 45 seconds of that entire round. I could see that. That's not what happened. Jan took him down halfway through both of those rounds. And he controlled him for the rest, but it's not like he dominated that the entire round. So like to so to act like and then once he, he got down, it's not like Jan was, you know, destroying him. He was just controlling him. He was just nullifying him, right? So those were clear ten nines, those weren't ten eights and in any book like I don't <clears throat> because if that's a 10 8 then we need to start throwing out some 10 7s we need to start throwing out some more 10 fucking 7s if that's gonna be our judge of like a 10 8 I mean which granted I think that it should be that way I think our the scoring should be more diversified I don't think it should be a 10-point uh, must system. I think that there should be able to have draws if a round is very close. Why can't that be a draw? Which their thing is that, oh, we want a person to win that we don't want draws. But it's like, hey, <laughs> there's some times where fights are fucking draws, right? Where both guys will, you know nullify and just either th throw you know like this like the same you know kind of content of uh strikes and <clears throat> or they'll just kind of do nothing you know and then just kind of point fight but then miss and then not really throw much it's like why like why shouldn't that be a draw that should be a 10 10 round or that should be a like you know could either have nine, nine, uh, nine, or fucking whatever you want to do, but the 10 point must has got to go, and we need clearer lines on what a 10 8 round is. Because I, because boxing, it's pretty clear if you get a knockdown, that is a point, that's a point gone. And then on top of that, if you won that round, right? So it's just like, so it's a 10-8 if you got dropped and then you lost that round on top of it, right? Pretty clear. Pretty clear. MMA doesn't have that. Which granted, we have a different system. That's why we don't have knockdowns officially. But we do. I mean, we do have knockdowns. I mean, it's pretty clear when fucking people get dropped on their butt, right? I mean, and, uh, yeah, just that 10 -8 was just fucking terrible. We, we need to do something, which Dana seemed like he was very motivated to change something. So I don't know what he's going to do, but he seemed fed up. And most of the time when fucking Dana's pissed off towards something, you know, he fucking gets shit done. So hopefully he could, uh, you know, find a way to because like that's the thing is that you also because the UFC doesn't have really power of the judges when they uh, fight uh, for different states. In certain countries, they do, they can uh, pick who will ref and judge and all of that stuff. But for the most part, they can't, which, granted, is a good thing because you can't have a promotion picking judges and picking referees because there could easily be biases. You know, that's, that's, that's a massive conflict, right? So... They can't really say, you know, like all like they could do is be like, hey, this guy is garbage. Can you please not put him on my cart? And then the state could either say yes or they could say no. That they could be like, no, we think uh, this person's good. So we're going to continue booking him. Or like they could think, yeah, we, th we also think that like this guy's garbage. So we won't put him on 
big fights. <clears throat> but but that doesn't happen like that often. I mean, because at the end of the t- the state is going to have their people, right? Like and, and they'll have their backs. And the referees and the judges, those are the state's people, so they look out for them. So when Dana comes to be like, oh, this guy's dog shit, the state immediately, most states are just, you know, they just ignore it pretty much. (laughs) And like a huge part is that these positions are appointed by governors. So you have, you have a bunch of lawyers who are, you know, casuals or people from boxing and or just people that don't even know the sport but just want an easy job that they could just show up to like a board meeting like once a month and get, you know, $50,000 stipend or like fucking whatever the fuck. Like I honestly think that that's what half of these people are, you know, are doing because a lot of these people aren't knowledgeable in the sport. And, I mean, there's a good chunk that just don't know about, you know, combat sports just in just in general. And to have people from boxing, like, that's where the major problem is. Because boxing is a completely different sport, completely different rule sets, right? In conclusion, people, judges suck ass. And some shit needs to fucking change. We need to have stricter rules on who becomes refs. We need to scrutinize and... uh, Not scrutinize, but... um, Re-evaluate the current judges. Right? It's... It's it, There just needs to be a widespread overhaul of the entire system. And to trust a government body to fix a broken system, is, you know. <laughs> I uh, have a bridge to fucking sell you in, you know, in Brooklyn or like whatever the fuck the saying is. But yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. But anyways. That was a great fight. Jan is a fucking beast. That Polish power is real. Respect it. Put some respect on on fucking Jan's name. I mean, Jan was the underdog. Which is like, what? I was so shocked. It's like, what? Izzy's moving up in weight. Like... Izzy is fighting the, the 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 bigger, stronger man. I mean, he's not taller, but he's physically bigger. He is stronger. He is. I mean that. His grappling is a lot is a lot better. So seeing that Jan was like an underdog was so weird. It just felt like disrespect. Like just people, are just feeding into the hype. Which Izzy deserves hype, right? But I mean, he's a human. He's mortal. It's not like the man can't lose. And uh, yeah, like that line was crazy. But uh, yeah, fucking put some respect on Jan's name, man. I feel yeah like people weren't fucking respecting Jan dude I mean I I don't know how many times I'm fucking gonna say that but put respect on that boy's name okay people let's fucking pick up the energy here I feel like I've been fucking droning on oh my goodness we had Dominic Cruz call out fucking Jan's fucking whatever the fuck he gives a fuck the the fucking uh, I didn't even know who who this guy was I guess uh, it's like Hans, Hans something. And I think, I don't know, because this guy is so insignificant that he doesn't even have like a wiki or anything like that. And if you search his fucking name, 
what comes up is Dominic Cruz calling him out for a fight. <laughs> and, and I think he's the CEO of Monster. I think. And he and uh, he's he's just one of those douchebag fucking millionaires that uh, you know that thinks he's a fucking badass and shit because he takes fucking steroids and he kicks a bunch of fucking heavy bags like so Dominic Cruz called him out for a fucking fight and uh that was that was just weird because it's like what I mean I don't know who this dude is but I can guarantee that Dominic Cruz would fucking piece this silly idiot up I mean I feel like Cruz would probably just kick him in the calf just over it, just give him like 20 fucking calf kicks and just try to break his fucking shin. <laughs> oh my goodness. But yeah, Cruz, Cruz looked good. I mean, Cruz, Cruz looked like old Cruz, but you could see the game starting to catch up where I feel like when Cruz first came on, he was that shit was nobody fought like which granted nobody now fights like Cruz I mean his head movement is so extra he does everything extra right his footwork is head movement he goes like the extra mile his fucking punches I mean he's lunging in he's ducking way the fuck down man he's 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 putting himself in danger he's, he t- takes massive risks by by doing that like I mean it's this fine line where if you if you go left when like you're supposed to go left then it works out and then the punch is a million miles from your fucking head but when you go left and you're supposed to go right you know that's (laughs) that's where you know it could be utterly devastating but then Cruz you know, it doesn't typically get cracked. I mean, there was, like, the Garbrandt fight, right? And then... I think he got finished after that, but... Uh, I mean, for the most part, it's it's worked for him, and... I didn't necessarily think that he won this fight. Um, yeah, 30-27. Who the... Who, uh, like, who scored that fight 30-27 for Cruz? That was such a close fight. Once that fight was done, I was like, who fucking won this? I like I I had no idea that was a very close fight. So to see a thirty twenty seven for Cruz, like God damn people, this judging is dog shit. Like come the fuck on, please man. And then fucking Kyler Phillips bursted onto the scene. Had a good fight, uh, versus Song. Uh, you know it's kind of. It was kind of disappointing just as a Song fan. Because, like, I wanted to see Song win, but, you know. But Kyler looked good. He nullified Song. And, uh, yeah, Song Song really couldn't do much. And it, it was a close fight. But at the end of the day... Kyler, I feel like, was edging out all of the exchanges throughout most of the fight. And then, uh, yeah, so, Askarov. Watch out for fucking that, man, man. This kind of felt like, uh, like the new guard coming in and the old guard coming out. We have Askar, this up-and-coming prospect, we have Joey B. He's a veteran. He's been fighting in the UFC for has to be over a decade now. And if it's not, it's it's very close. I mean and he's been the top three guy in this weight class for over a decade. I cannot think of anybody else that has done that, that has maintained that. Where he's destroys the entire weight class is always top three but can't reach that belt i mean i could think of uh chad right chad was one you know like they both come from the same camp 
Um, Kenny Florian too. <clears throat> but uh, yeah. So it kind of feels like Joseph's at the tail end here. Um, he didn't look old. He didn't look. He didn't look slow. He didn't look bad. Like I thought, Joseph looked. He looked physically good. I mean, there was nothing about him that you know that made me say, "Oh, you should, you should stop fighting." Like, oh, this guy's like, you know, his chin is like still there. He ate some clean shots and wasn't even rock. So his his chin's there. He still has speed. He still has power. But I feel like Joseph Style is just a little too basic to uh, beat a guy like Ascar. He's a classic boxer wrestler. And I feel the sport has moved on past that style. <clears throat> But, I mean, who knows? Well, not the sport. I shouldn't say the sport. The flyweight class. I feel being a boxer wrestler in the flyweight class isn't going to to uh, work. For different weight classes, yeah. You know, it can still work, definitely. <clears throat> and I feel like the higher up you go in weight, you know, the the better that it can work but uh but those flyweights i i don't see that style like you know him ever winning uh the belt so at this point it's like why continue fighting joseph i mean i really want to see him win the uh belt but you know unfortunately you know got knocked out twice but you know uh, how many times am I going to say that you know you know you know you know you know big people I've been going on for too long I feel like this has been pouring okay, I haven't said anything funny or anything interesting just dating the obvious here droning on about whatever the fuck stupid shit but it doesn't matter because I know for certain I'll bet my life on it that not one person is listening up until this point I'm, I'm sure there's a couple people that listen for probably like five minutes but I know there's not one soul that is listening to this point at this second right now but if you are I fucking love you buddy you are the shit. And I will suck your dick. Okay? <laughs> Anyways, Tim Elliott. That fucking Tim... That Tim Elliott fight was... Oh, my God. I've never seen anything like it. Never seen anything like it, man. This... Tim Elliott was just trying to fucking destroy Jordan like he wasn't even trying to like beat him he was trying to make him go through hell and he was trying to physically torture him for 15 minutes and you could see that there's points where he was on his back and he was grinding his forearm on his nose oh my oh just thinking about it is giving me chills that must have hurt so fucking bad and then just constantly choking him and squeezing his throat and covering his mouth so he couldn't breathe and this he was just making it miserable he was putting jordan through fucking hell there there was one point where tim was on was was uh on mount or half guard maybe and he pinned his head against jordan's head and then he just started squeezing so that all of the blood that was on the cut on his forehead was just squirting out onto Jordan's face. And he was just trying to cover him in his own blood and get it in his eyes and in his mouth. And just, it was fucking brutal. It was brutal. He put on a fucking old-fashioned ass whooping. I haven't seen, ugh. 
that was an ass whooping. That was just trying to fucking hurt somebody. That wasn't trying to, you know, oh, like, I just want to win this fight. It's like, no, fucking Tim was like, I want to hurt this motherfucker. I want to make sure this dude fucking hurts. That he's going to remember me for the rest of his fucking life. And I guarantee he fucking will. Tim, though, he accused him of being a woman beater mid fight. What? I've never, I've never, I've never seen anything like that. Like, the weird part is, is that he asked him mid, mid, mid fight. He's just like, hey, in 2000 and. 18 I I uh, heard that you beat a girl is that true it's like what like how are you asking is it like before you're gonna sit down and, like have a conversation with this guy like and then he was like nah like you like don't know shit pretty much and that fucking Tim was like okay well I do know that I'm gonna whoop your fucking ass I mean that that, that part I do know <laughs> so but, I mean, granted, to be fair to Jordan, he I don't think there was any charges pressed. And I don't think he went to jail for anything like that. So, uh, Tim got a Facebook message from a girl. He, like, won't say who, but it was a girl saying that Jordan beat her and other things and provided pictures as proof. So who so who knows if that's true? I mean, that's kind of weird that you would go to Tim Elliott but not the police. I I I I mean, so right there is like a little suspect. <laughs> I mean, but I you know, but like that that like whole thing is um it was just weird. It was just that that was just weird. It was just, it was brutal. It was weird. It was all of the above. And Carl's Olberg, Car, Car, Carlos Olberg, my God, that was one hell of a fight, man. Carlos was teeing off on fucking Kennedy, man. And how much of a beast is Kennedy? Holy fucking shit, dude. Holy fucking shit. There was just points there where Kennedy was standing up against the fucking cage and Olberg was unloading like a 12 punch combo. Just gadanga gadanga gadoosh. And Kennedy was just eating it. He was just shelling up and just eating it. And then in round two, Carlos, I felt, got used to. Kennedy's power and you've seen a lot of fighters uh go go uh go out in the same way where you get used to a guy's power right where you get hit with it full clip and then you immediately think oh I just got hit with this dude's heart hardest punch and I didn't go out so I'm good fuck this dude and then I'm, like, sure that it wasn't, like, a conscious thought, but you, you could just tell that that was what was going on because Carlos's hands just started getting lower and lower. He started taking more and more risks, and then Kennedy eventually cracked him, dude, and dropped him and, and fucking finished him. That, that was, that was crazy. That fucking came out of nowhere. Like, that was so insane. Insane. That was, that was probably the craziest finish of the entire night as like far as like unexpected factor just like holy shit like oh my goodness like that came out of nowhere and then i have to be real there's a lot of people saying sean brady is good like and but i miss this fight i watch fucking euros right and then I missed out on, on, like, the next two fights. And then from Kennedy on, I saw. So I missed Sean. But Sean Brady, I, 
I heard, I mean, I didn't even watch Fuck It Fly, but I heard that he did very well. I mean, like, I won't speak on it because I didn't watch it. But what I did watch, I touched on this very briefly, was Euros Medic. My fucking word. Euros Medic. I mean, let's just not even talk about that ter- that fucking terrible stoppage and just let's focus on how dope fucking Euros is and how much of an exciting prospect at is this lightweight i want to say he's a lightweight uh but anyways he's uh yes yes so he is a lightweight what what an exciting prospect to an already stacked fucking weight class like oh my god fucking matches it dude imagine fucking euros and dan hooker or some shit like that which granted that's very quick this dude had his first fucking UFC fight. But in contenders, he looked like a fucking animal. And in this fight, he looked like a fucking beast. And he looks like he should be thrown into the top 15 right a fucking way. Granted, this dude has only had seven fights. But he's not that young, though. He is 27, so... He's mature as a man, but he's young as a fighter. So, I don't know if he has a different background. He has to have a different background because he doesn't fight like he has seven fights. Or like he must have been training for a while because he he looked amazing. So, that is one guy to fucking look out for, man. Euros Medic or Medic. I don't know if it's Medic or Medic, but... He's uh, from fucking one of those Slavic countries, so I bet it's probably fucking Medic. All right, people, I've been, I have been rambling for a while now. I feel like this podcast is uh, not that great, you, you know. To be completely real, this is my like fifth time doing it. I did a bunch of takes, and then I realized I was uh, I was doing it on the wrong fucking microphone, and it sounded like shit. So then I had to redo it, but hey. I fucking did it. So that was that. Uh, next week, well, not next week. This week, Friday, I will have a new podcast. So my schedules will be: I will post a podcast Friday. So when there's fights, I will post a, a podcast Friday and a podcast Monday. And that Friday podcast, I will give you my locks and I'll break down that card. Then the Monday, I'll go through it. Then when there's no fights, podcasts will be on Fridays only. And then I'll just talk about whatever the fuck. So, for the no people listening, <laughs> thank thank you very, very much. And, uh, yeah, I hope you all have an amazing week. And I'll give you my three locks on Friday. And I guarantee to actually make you some fucking money. Okay. Thank you, people. I love you all.